Dane, is it Sivir? Is it a support pick? No, it's Jungle Evelyn. I'm surprised. I forget if that was... It was banned, actually, the first time around. It was. Evelyn it was. was a ban for Curse Academy. They decided, well, we'll ban Elise, but this gives away Eve. I, I feel like the Elise ban a bit wasted then. That's true. That's extremely true. And the, But, I mean, they would first pick Elise if it was left open. Yeah, but then the question is, is like the incremental value of like Elise versus Evelyn worth the fact you could ban something else out? Uh, it really depends, because now it looks like Cloud9 Tempest are going to go for a, an early game composition because of Elise. You know, her yeah. late game scaling is kind of iffy. There's like three different builds with her. You go yeah. AP, a lot of people are favoring the AD builds in solo queue. Yeah. But in team fighting, you really are minimal damage, more just chasing people down and being a threat. But yeah. early on, you'd look to dominate lanes. Mm -hmm. So might, looking, might look for some late game scaling champions that Evelyn can help get, scale into late game. So. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Curse Academy definitely looking... Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. see what they go for. Curse Academy definitely looking for their own sort of set of stats here. Ziggs does come through for Duo Sec. I like that choice. It's going to set him up, I think, better for his lane as well as better for team fights. So already you've got Ziggs, Annie. Great team fight presence. Yeah. Tibbers into Mega Inferno Bomb is ludicrously good. All um, that AoE damage, too. Yeah. And Wave Clear, something they lacked in Game 1 on Curse Academy's side. The LeBlanc, we saw Duo Sec go for the lane clear, and he got Rude Imprisoned. Yep. The Distortion Mimic didn't work out for him that time. And now he doesn't have to risk himself and his body and the damage in his HP pool to get, accomplish that. Just going to throw water balloons or snow cones. It's no big deal. Cloud and Tempest are going to pick these same solo lanes as last time. They're not afraid of any of the counter picks. Rise top lane, Oriana back in the mid. I think Altec's about to pick Vayne again. I think they're, I, I'll feel like Cloud and Tempest will pick the same comp because it worked last time. So Cloud9 Tempest now in the 4.3 with all of the changes. They opt for a very aggressive jungler. And then they aren't afraid to pick their solo lanes blindly. Yeah. Like, we're just going to pick scaling solo lanes that play safe, that Evelyn can help out every now and then. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing, too, is that Rise is very safe, but he also has gank assistance, so it's easy to gank for him with the Rune Prison. Yeah. So a lot of people who scale into late game don't have a tool like that. It's a lot of the early games like Renekton, who can Ruthless Predator you in the top lane. Mm -hmm. With Shyvana, you gank for Shyvana, there isn't a lot of follow-up. No. So... I like the pick, and I like that Rise is coming back up into the top lane. I haven't seen him in a while since the tier nerfs, but now with the buffs to him, slight. Yeah. He's coming back in. See, works out for him there. You see the Thrush hovered over by Glebe. Altec will make his choice soon. Pat is going to pick a new champion this time around, though. Didn't go back for, what did he play last time? Kha'Zix. Wasn't picked or banned, but it's the Lee Sin pickup anyway. Rux, of course, still can pick up Aatrox. Could actually play Lee Sin, too, if he wanted yeah. to. It is in his solo queue pool. Uh, Kennen, actually another champion that Rux plays a lot of. You can see that one swapped around, and Cloud and Tempest does go for the same comp. But to be fair, instead of Pantheon, which I think actually won them the game because the mid game engages, is an Evelyn. So I feel like if the same early game happens, much better for Curse Academy. Yeah, same solo lanes, same AD carry, different support, different jungler. Oh yeah, they, they swap yeah, supports. Yeah, they swap supports. My bad. They're, Andy and Thresh is still in the game, just opposite sides now. Yep. So Pat's going to be on Lee Sin. The mid lane swapped away as well here for Curse Academy. So very few changes for both teams. Both teams pretty happy with the direction of their comps, just picking different champions in some of the roles to accentuate it better. We'll see what happens, though. Curse Academy had such a good levels one through four, and then it fell apart. I want to see if they can keep that going, or if they got something else up their sleeves to get this game. Yeah, I'm not too sure. I like the Cloud9 Tempest composition. They just ran it last game, and it was very convincing in the late game. Yeah. Curse Academy... They say they're going to try more of the same, but with little variations, put a little twist on it. Now they have more wave clear, so they can stand the late game if it gets to that point, and Duo yeah. Set can farm and match Bishu. Are they going to lane swap again? Are they going to do it? Because it's Aatrox versus Ryze mm -hmm. once again. It's Sivir versus Vayne. Yeah. I, I mean, the thing is, I feel like Curse Academy have the better 2v2 and the better 1v1. Mm -hmm. I think those are both perfectly acceptable, and you could just place the lanes and go for it. Now, the lane swap did work for them on a strategic level. That was really impressive to me that they made that one work and they got a lead from it. But as far as early game matchups go, they're fine to play standard. Um, so I don't know. Like, like It's kind of like no matter what they do, it should be better for them based on history and based on like expected matchups. So I still feel like that's a good thing for Curse Academy. I just want to see him do more. Now, the other thing I do want to point out, though, is Lee Sin against Vayne. I... It kind of depends on how you play it, but I like Lee Sin into Vayne because you have the reveal for the stealth, and if you kick her into your team, she's going to die. But the difficulty is that Vayne can outplay the Lee Sin pretty easily with like a Condemn like in the middle of a safeguard and break that whole sort of play. So I think if the sort of push to Vayne happens, 
it's going to be on how well Altec plays it. Curse Academy, they're going five man strong right here. All of them with Doran's items, except for the junglers. Mm -hmm. So they're looking for the early damage. They can invade's coming out here. Let's see what they can find. They've pinged up two of the likely rush spots. Mash be cutting in the side. Of course, K1 did charge his stun on Annie right now. Find Devlin, shut her down. That's the mission here. The thing is, it's so hard to do that because Eve will see you before you see her, and yeah. she can get away from you. But if they're sitting in a camp. Yeah. But like if like Eve were like right there where that lily yeah, pad is. Would see him first. Would see him come in, not know that they see her like they wouldn't mm -hmm. see her and he'd be safe. You're like Yasuki can spot them, oh. but then he's in flash stun range. Like right now they know he's there. He's gonna back it off. It will give Hmm. Interest I'm surprised that Curse Academy didn't stay to get ward coverage. Because I think they'd be the stronger team because of Annie stun and everything. Kez is gonna go for the blue. Now the thing is, now Cloud and Tempest without using the ball, and Bichu hasn't learned a skill yet, they can't know if there's ward coverage. They don't know, like, if people are sitting in that brush still, what's going on. And so the jungler, like Kez, he puts the ward down for safety. No one's stopping him to put this down. And so he can start the blue, but he has no idea if Curse Academy is coming to stab him right now. So it's a lane swap by Cloud9 Tempest this time. They're going to put Rise in the bottom lane. Also, Rise is helping out, or Yazuki's helping out Kez at the blue buff. Mm -hmm. And they warded their own. So yeah. they will know if Lee Sin goes straight from his red to Cloud9 Tempest's blue. If he goes to his own blue, he's going to lose out on a lot of jungle time. He will. See what happens. The lane swap did get sniffed out by Curse Academy. They're going to put the 2v2 match up here in the top lane. And I want to see how this one pans out. Annie, just a very strong champion overall. See if she can make things go down for these guys. Bishu, happy to chill. In the mid lane now. Farm lane in the mid lane. Probably not going to be much here. Yasuki going to push around. There's the knockup in from Rux. Honestly, this should be Aatrox's matchup. And look at the damage coming through. Ooh. Not afraid to fight. Tried to throw a Q. Didn't get it. So Rux doesn't even have his W right now for the sustain. He just has his Dark Flight to go ahead and get close to Rise. And uh -oh. oh, here comes the counter. He finds Kaz. Good damage early on. The flash from Annie. Pat's going to go for this buff. Smite up for both these guys. Pulls it almost into the brush. Picks it off on the side, so yeah, he's gonna get both of his buffs here. Could have been catastrophic for Pat, but he plays it right and comes around from the exact side that's gonna give him the best advantage. And now Kez has to go to his own red. The question is, is Lee Sin going to be there once again? That's such good play. Actually, Lee Sin's looking to stab him at the wolf camp. Look at this. Pat's gonna find Kez without flash. Oh! Oh, he dodges the Q. Big. Ooh. That was big. He would have died. Yeah, he doesn't have his Dark Frenzy just yet, so he couldn't mm -hmm. remove the slow if it was applied to him. And the lane swap is actually going pretty even right now. And now he's killing some wolves. Getting the wolves. Stealing away the jungle. You got to go bully the jungle. Yeah. Keep tabs on the Evelyn. Don't let her get to these lanes, especially when these lanes don't have early game power. Mm -hmm. These are late game scaling lanes. And I like how long Pat is waiting uh, before he starts his own blue buff. He can give it his eggs later on. Doesn't need it right now. He can just counter jungle for a while. What's well, down? They didn't clear it. Oh. Kez is wearing it. Oh, I'm just stupid. Because <laughs> it, it it looks like it's up, right? I'm That's just, why Kez is level 2. He didn't I'm just really not it. smart. Okay. So we're good. Just kidding. Hasn't cleared the marker. Shame on you, Pat. Ugh. And now he doesn't have the timer. He won't know. Here we go. Rux taking a little bit of pain. Does not know Evelyn's waiting in the wings. Lisa nowhere around. Rux still getting some damage down. Whew. Yeah, Yazuki's getting him low-ish before the fight actually happens so they can burst him out of the passive. Good slow is going to stop that. It's a level 2 Kez, but of course with the gank assistance from Yanzuki on Rise. Could have been successful there. Aatrox, he can always jump out of it, but he take a boatload of damage. Mm -hmm. and now we have Pat coming around the side. They do see him with the ward, and he does have a level advantage over Kez currently. And Kez actually hasn't gotten a lot accomplished in the last couple of minutes. He has yeah. no potions. Sit in, he, next camp that he clears, he's going to take some damage. But it will give him level three. And he'd be able to get he'd be able to get spirit stone by then, and then just kind of go and farm around in the jungle. So, yeah. not too sad. The the CS is a little bit deceptive because he has killed the big golem and whatnot, uh, which is of course a lot of Ooh. golden experience. So the ward came down into that bush, and Pat almost walked up to it to reveal himself, mm -hmm. but decides to just take the long way around. He actually ward jumps over the wall. Ooh. He's unspotted coming in here. Oh, oh, he's seen. 
Yeah. He, foot, he doesn't know slipped. that he's seen, is the funny thing. Foot slipped out of the bush. Yeah, it's going to be almost no possible successful dive here for Crow's Academy. Going to be Pat backing off. There's pings, actually, that Lee Sin might have gone towards the mid lane. They don't know where Pat is right now, except that he might be coming in behind Oriana. They're actually leading him on with the pings. So the blue pings going like, oh, go up. And now he's going to find a camp to clear. This is great. I like this, though. Pat knows he will outfight Kez in the jungle. Lee Sin's going to do better than Evelyn here, and so he's just taking camps away. He's further delaying the level 6 from Kez, which is really the first time that ganks start to really matter from Evelyn, unless you have a lane with crowd control. Yeah, and Evelyn... Like you said, can't duel Elise in one-on-one. -on -one. Because she's so effective in her stealth and positioning, that is where most of her kit power comes from, not from straight-up fighting. Mm -hmm. Now, Pat, he's still roaming around. He's looking, for, he's looking for camps. He's looking to see if Evelyn's there at double golem, so it's unlikely. She's not there. Q reveals the camp is gone. Still waiting around, looking for Yazuki. Honestly, neither jungler has been killing many camps in the last, like, two minutes. They've all been, like, waiting around, like, will something happen bottom lane? And it... Almost does every time. And here's that thing I was talking about earlier. Oh, K1. Stun on the K1. The He's on the wrong side of the map oh. right now. The jump in from the land and the hook as well. Kill goes to Alltech in the 2v2 matchup. Nicely done. Once again, just adding more to that KDA. That is just so high up there right now. And K1, he's the new guy on Curse Academy. He's coming up a little short in these matches. Yeah, honestly, I'm not, unfortunately, super impressed with him just yet. See if he can make things happen a little bit later in this game, but... Early landing, not too great here. Very small CS lead for MASH, but honestly getting a champion kill first blood worth a heck of a lot more. Alltech level 5, going to be able to recall back. Probably has about 1,600 gold right now. Pick up whatever he wants. 1,850. It's close. Yeah. Probably go for Bilge Water Cutlass straight off. Yeah, and Boots or a Dagger, I'm not sure which he'd go for. Actually, you can get almost both. That's uh, true. Me Pat killing away this little lizard camp right there. Cutlass, extra Doran's Blade actually is a pickup for Alltech. Surprised he went for that, but wants a bit more health and damage. Okay. He's in a good spot though. Mashmi still has not backed yet though. Has yet to put items into his inventory. Which means there's going to be a little bit of extra lane pressure here from the Vayne. Because she'll be in lane with the waves and then Mashmi's going to still have to recall. So Curse Academy are going to get outscaled. Once again, mm -hmm. if they just sit around, Cloud9 Tempest are off to a better start than they were last game, and Curse Academy are not in the same position that they previously were. Their team comp changed a bit, so they have more late game power in terms of wave clear, but they still do have a weaker overall composition. When people think late game champions, they're like, oh, Vayne Rise. Yeah. Best scaling champions in the game for the most part. Pretty much. Karth is kind of in there, as yeah. honorary mention. Uh, and if you're Shifter, Ziggs, for sure. That's true. So there's... There's some things to keep track of, but absolutely, I, I agree with you here on, on the general uh, direction of the compositions. It's that Cloud and Tempest is likely to keep going all the way up. 1-0 so far for these guys. 300 gold lead, which I gotta say, despite a 600 gold first blood, only a 2-300 gold uh, actual lead here. So the laning phase by itself, not cutting kills, great for Curse Academy. It's mostly the jungle yeah. that's causing that difference. Is Kez has been getting counter jungle by Pat. So it's not just gold into Pat's pocket, it's gold that Kez has nowhere to even pick up. Yeah. So Experience as well. Yeah, that's true. Six Level and a six. quarter versus five. Pat's actually looking for a play on this red buff. Oh. It's going to be a little oh. bit late, though. Kez picks it up, hits level six. It's like, is he going to throw a Q? Blind Q. A bit late for the timer, unfortunately. I guess every Q from Lee Sim is a blind Q. <laughs> even if you have vision, it's a blind Q. You know, every time you grab him, even if you're unranked, it's still a blind pick. Huh? Okay. Okay. <laughs> so no dragon attempt though for Curse Academy. They want they wanted to play for the red buff. They came a little bit late to it, and otherwise just uh, kind of backed off there. They got pink ward control over the dragon area, but they didn't convert it into much. Back to the two v two lane up top, five hundred gold, four five hundred gold there. The lead. In a much slower game. You guys happy to play their laning phase? A laning phase. We have a laning phase this game. Yeah, I mean, the game, last game was cool though. To be fair, it was. It was very exciting, and also those are very high pressure and very tense situations for on your shot caller oh, yeah. in the early game. You're, you're like, do we go back? Do we defend this tier 2 top turret? And they're like, no, just keep pushing. Just get the turret. Because you have to do cost-benefit analysis. Do we defend it? It's going to take about half of its HP and we won't lose it, but we won't even get a bottom turret in exchange for mm -hmm. it. And then if you say, no, just go for it, you'll get the turret, but you'll lose the turret in response. Exactly. So it's like, do we allow overall just more gold on the map in general so everybody's a little buffer? Mm -hmm. Or do we keep it with that tiny lead we have? Oh, there we go. First damage onto Yazuki. One hit to go for the... Oh, it's flat! Yeah, there it is. 
He was two hits away, but he got the Empowered W. Massive damage coming out there. Maxing those blades second. Huge from Rux. Blood price to scale so well. And the fact that you have your max in your blood well gives you more attack speed. Mm -hmm. And the Massacre on top of it. The fact, when you close the distance on Rise, especially this early on, when he's still trying to scale up, you can get those kills. And Rux is going to come out big here. We talked about the featured matchup of those two against each other. Yeah. Now they're actually in a lane against each other. Mm -hmm. Before they weren't. It was 2v1s. And now we see Kez up top. Going through the bushes, even though he's Evelyn Invisible, they still want to try and get a hook and convert that into a kill here with the ultimate from Kez, the Agnes Embrace. Slow him down. Let's see what we got. Oh, here comes Pity Pat. Oh, it does oh, not what? land the flay. It does not land the hook either. Silver ult was popped, though. Will they get the re-engage from Pat? Flash Tibber is not going to hit anything. Gleep Blarbu does flash out of that one. Nothing traded. Okay. So the flay was just a little short because of the ultimate from Mash. Was able to get K1 out of the range of it. Barely. Just got the little girl's skirt there, just clipped it right up. And the Tibbers, at the same time, very short. Mm -hmm. I was really actually stunned by that. It didn't land on me, but I was stunned by that. <laughs> oh, Tibbers going to check the bush for Kez. Doesn't see him, though. It's not <laughs> it a champion. doesn't see him. It's not a champion. Not going to oh, no. help. So they don't know that Kez has shown up. There's ulti on the two. Pat shows up for the damage. Will they find oh, him? Oh, taking damage. The kick from Altec lands the Q as well. Condemned oh. back. Flash away, away from Kez, but Kez now getting chased. His W's down for two more seconds. Mash could land a high damage Q. No flash. Oh, he oh, goes for oh, Altec! The plays from Mash me, and Kez goes down as well. Beautiful from Curse Academy. Altex KDA. Not ruined, because it's his first death of the entire <laughs> series, so it still technically stays the same. But here we're going to see. Go straight in. They don't know Pat's there. He lands his Q onto Altec and kicks him. Boom. Through Glebe. Does the damage. Goes after him. Gets knocked back. Says, oh no, I need to flash away. Gets out. Kez overextends a tiny bit to go after Pat. And now they chase him down. Oh, flashes the Omega Inferno Bomb. That was the key there because he didn't have flash to wow. get out of the Boomerang Blade by that time. And he had his Tumble Bolt ready. Mm -hmm. So the cooldown wasn't even ticking on it because it doesn't start until you release it. Yep. So Mash Me, though, I got to point out how cool that play was. So he saw Vayne because of the Omega Inferno Bomb and then said, he's in Tri Brush right now because he flashed yeah. it immediately without any further vision. The lack Very of impressive. Lack of hesitation is something that I've always thought dif differentiates the good teams from the great teams. Oh, yeah. When there's no hesitation throughout your entire team. Like when you watch a team like SK Telecom, T1K, mm -hmm. they're just the decisiveness in their movements, regardless yeah. of how aggressive they are. Oh, yeah. Even if they're hyper aggressive, like, I'm going. I'm going yep. now. And you trust the team to do it. I'm level three ribbon. Boom, we're in. Yep. Special talked about it when he was in the desk with us uh, in the LCS. Said, you know, when I go over something, my team trusts me and they'll follow up. Yeah. They'll just do it because they trust that I made the right call there. And a lot of good calls made right there. 2,000 gold lead to Curse Academy. Really good start to these guys. See what they can keep going with this one. Mash me. 117 minions, 115 for the Ziggs of Duo Sec. See what else Curse Academy can do. Bishu's Dragon's got his still farming up. pants on. Though. Yeah, he does. He's almost to. He's above that. Uh, 10 per minute mark, mm -hmm. which means he's been farming wraiths, he's been farming wraiths, he's been farming wraiths and wolves. Mm -hmm. Just getting them all the time. And I talked about this earlier, that that's his play style typically when he wants to carry. He'll have big goose eggs, but then he shows up and you're like, wow, this 0, zero, zero Orianna just blew up our team and now he's 4-0. Yep. It's a shockwave dissonance, it's an amazing combo. And Curse Academy, take a dragon fairly easily, Cloud9 Tempest, don't even put up a fight. Yeah. Bishu getting a blue at the time. Chris Academy committed the team to, and honestly, they're better this early on. Like, you don't you don't fight for Dragon when you've got Vayne Rise at 14 minutes. Like, it's not going to go well. It's actually the mistake that Dignitas made against TSM when they picked uh, like that Quinn Kale comp. Like, the champs would work, but they fought a, like a Leona like a Leona team at 12 real items. And Cloud and Tempest know that mistake. They're not going to go for it right here. Going to play play for a while. Wait for Rise of Vayne to tick up. It is on Curse Academy, though, to take as many edges as possible right now and get farther ahead. It's their fault in game one, too. They got ahead, mm -hmm. but they just couldn't convert it into anything else. And it's quite possible that their laning phase just didn't last long enough because they didn't stay in the bully mode. They took the turrets very quickly instead of farming champions for a bit. Yeah. And just pushing advantages. Yeah. You, normally people are like, oh, let's just take the turret as soon as possible. It's like, eh, in that situation where you're a lane bully, mm -hmm. I would say just sit on your hands for a while and keep the turret up and yeah. allow your jungler to position well. That's definitely an option for guys. Um, but if you just can to close keep the, the game turret up. Of course. And I think that teams, even if you take the, the turrets rather quickly, 
you then play the rotation control yes. game. Like, you never give up a dragon, right, which is a huge mistake that Chris kind of made last game. But you also then say, look, we're going to make... Oh, ooh. Good didn't tumble. Get it. Good condemn back. Okay. If he didn't get the tumble, though, that was close to a kill for Rux. Okay. Um, but yeah, you, you then you get ward control, and you start taking away buffs. Because you realize, look, we anything that is not a turret should be ours, and you play in that mindset. And you say, blue buff ours, red buff ours, double golems ours, dragon ours, and then you just build a gold lead that way. Because you start your opponents to nothing but lane farm. Yeah. And vision is how you execute that. At Curse Academy, they were trying to be on top of it, but Cloud9 Tempest were sweeping it out. Mm -hmm. And now Rux is coming in from the side to try and engage this fight. Beast on the backside, flashed on oh. again, dodged away by Beast. Second time we've seen Tibbers flashed away from. But it does give the mid lane turret good choice by Curse Academy. K1, once again, he hasn't been very convincing to me. He's replacing Zekin. There's some pretty big shoes to fill in the amateur mm -hmm. scene, in the challenger scene. Yeah. When you're going pro, Zekin has been on the LCS stage. And now K1, just this is some mild pressure here, hasn't really landed to Tibbers all game. No, unfortunately not. This, the stuns have been flashed away from. But at least the effort does count. I do want to at least yes. consider that, yes. you know, it's not, he's he's not so aggressive. much missing. He, he is trading flashes. And losing his ult cooldown, to be fair. But trading flash at the very least, getting some pressure down for... Well, three and a half thousand gold for Curse yeah. Academy right now. The side lane push from Rux is there. And I want to see what Curse Academy can convert with now. Can they keep the pressure on, or will they get caught in a 5v4? They see Evelyn, they catch her. Wow. Wait, was she even in a pink ward, or did he, like, blind Q that? She walked over the pink over there, and yes, he did blind Q afterwards. Okay. Well, oh. we've got we're going to get hit oh, a bleep. little bit. Onto the bomb, he goes with the... Uh, Stuff's gonna keep him alive. A great kick and a knockup. Two oh, Altic is gonna go down. Has his KDA and the fight continues. Double kill, huge numbers for Curse Academy. Only Yaziki left alive. Mid lane turret gonna be going down. It's a 4 1, and Rux comes in from the side to just set that up. And they're saying, let's just tank it. Just tank it. It's fine. Rux has passive. He'll heal himself up off the minion wave if they allow him to. Mm -hmm. And they could go to another one right here. They've gotta be careful about the Baron, like refight, like the re-engage, but it's unlikely with uh, it being this early on. But Inhib Turret will also go down here in Curse Academy's favor. Big gold lead from that one. Seven and a half thousand this early. Once again, just like his Renekton games, when Rux gets ahead, he builds Phage, mm -hmm. which only turns into Trinity Force. Yes. <laughs> Wise choice, man. I don't agree with it, but it seems to be working because it's allowing him to keep up to people, give him stick to itiveness again. Yeah. I mean, he can wait on Phage for a while anyway. I, yeah. I don't think he's going to pick up. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Just kidding. He's going hard for that one. Uh, okay. Oh. I thought he was going to wait for a bit. Nope. <laughs> that ish is in his inventory right now. Here we go. All right, Rux. Don't let me down, man. Wow. Don't Every let me down. He's, he's got 100% win rate with Trinity Force so far. So. Yeah. And a 0% win rate. No. 50% 50, 50 win rate without it. Oh. <laughs> I Well, here's the thing. It's working. He's, he's a very bursty champion, and you can actually layer your abilities fairly well. His like he All Aatrox is max E first. The cooldown's down to about 9 seconds. So you jump in with Q, land the auto attack. If you wanted to, you could wait on your ulti for 2 seconds. I don't think you would. No. I think you want it right away. Yeah. Uh, but you can then use Blades of Torment a little bit later to get the extra burst out. But I think the whole point of Aatrox is you Q, E, R somebody immediately. So you can stack them all at the same time. Once yeah, you get I mean, the knockup, his you use your R is pretty high. Yeah. yeah, QR is right away. E, you can wait because you've but got you the knockup anyway. You want to keep them close to you, though. You yeah. want to have that slow on. But, I mean, it's going to give him movement speed. Gonna, it's going mean, to give him everything else. It, it is stat efficient if you want all the stats there. And even if you spend the 400 for mana, like, there's still a lot of other things there. Rux has been watching Darien too much. I don't know. Let's see if there's an Ohm Wrecker. It's not, it's, not the real, it's not the real Darien swagger. All tech. Chilling with Blade of the Ruin King. Let's see how much he actually hits for with that. Oh, a lot. We just smack somebody. I mean, to be fair, actually, it works in... Okay, so I want to take a step back and, and okay. kind of reaffirm okay. why it's good. Go ahead and... I'm going to try again. Try to make a case. Because there's so many reasons that Trinity Force can be good that it's hard to find the right one. Oh. QRE auto attack is a freaking ton of burst. You trigger your third W to be ready. Um, the blood price plus the Trinity Force damage proc plus your other three active abilities, and you've probably got like 1,200 burst damage. For that case, it super works. And then like you've got some attack speed and AD, which is just good. 
At that point, I'd rather just buy a Hydra, jump into the fight, use the AoE active on it. Way less stylish. But then at the same time, it has AD ratios, which we talked about earlier on his W. He would be healing and doing more damage. Well, he's got AP ratios too. Okay, okay. You got me there. But here we have on the hunt, and they're trying to Ooh, get to Yazuki seven, before he six, backs. Five, four, three, two, one. Blind Q? Nope, nope. No lift off. Wrong brush. Why did you boomerang blue the same brush you warded? That's like a little bit weird, but you know, whatever. So it's on the hunt to attempt to get the rise. Yeah. It would have been good if it, he had actually gotten it, mm -hmm. but now it's a wasted ultimate. Yeah. And while we were talking about why Trinity Force would be so great, but it's not, Red was stolen away by Pat. They used zone control there. They knew it was a 4v5 at the Dragon. Curse Academy picks up another for themselves, making a 7k gold lead mm -hmm. with this team that does have more late game power just because of the mid laner with the wave clear. Yeah. And I like seeing Duosec on this more than I liked his LeBlanc. Yeah, he's doing pretty well for himself. 104, 170 CS, still getting out minion farmed by Bishu. Monster is part of that score. But uh, Curse Academy team is a whole looking a little bit better. 8 to 1 on the score line, 5 0 in turrets. Good start for these guys. Bishu holding on to his blue buff, farming away. Death cap coming up soon. Highest farm in the game. Yep. Above, still above that 10 per minute mark. He's looking to be a big impact in the fights. If he can get a shockwave on four people, which is definitely within his grasp and definitely within his power, mm -hmm. then it can turn the fight completely around. They aren't super tanky on the side of Curse Academy. But they're just going to go for the mid lane. Yeah, they want that inhibitor back. Okay, well, Blood Price is prepared here for Rox. If he finds the burst, it'll be pretty high. Damage coming through for Mash. The recall for Rise has happened. Honestly, Curse Academy, they could just stick for this and get the damage down. Pretty Force Brox there. Rox is ready. Ready to hit. I'm he has the passive. Chris kind of getting really afraid, but they're waiting for the next minion wave. They're they're confident in knowing that they will land the damage, and there they go. Inhibitor goes down 22, 22 into the game. They're going to back off big minion wave bottom. They could cut off the rotate and get this turret down, but they're going to wait around in the jungle. They had so many pink wards on their left and right when they were sieging that inhibitor because they didn't want Kez to be there. Well, Kez is there, but it might just be enough to push down. The minions are going to die rather quickly, so poke on a Glebe. CA took their time. I, again... Uh, that was a slower rotate than they needed. They could have gone through the back knowing where the rest of the team was and pushed that with the wave that was already there. They're going to wait for the next wave, though. They're playing it more patiently than I guess I would have. But Well, remember, last time I said they don't like to dive people under turrets yeah. unless it's Rux. That's the only exception here. And especially against somebody like Bishu on the Orianna, mm -hmm. he will get your back line right under the turret and make them stay well past the time that they want to be there. Well, here we go. So they're just going to try to get some long-range damage on it, but they don't have long-range champions. But they force Yazuki to come back yeah. to the mid lane to hold on. Super minions, even the mid lane actually, does pressure and hip turrets, or sorry, uh, Nexus turrets really well, actually. So uh, that does pull the rise away. And at this point, it's 5v4. And look at this, the bomb coming out, and it's Aatrox showing up as well. They force the rest of C9T back getting tier 2 turret. There's a good loop around there by Rux to go ahead and route them. And then the Mega Inferno bomb only hit Bishu. But there's enough damage to make him back off instead of mm -hmm. try to re-engage a fight. Yazuki, once again, was not there. And they're trying to clear out this mid lane. No Dragon or Baron in anybody's sights just yet. But it's worth pointing out the top lane outer turret yeah. did go down to Yazuki split a while back before he was pulled back to defend his base. 205 minions on Rise, though. 0-1-0. Has a blue elixir if he needs it. Uh, uh, not Athene's. Um, Archangels done pretty soon. So the items are almost coming to completion right now for C90. Phantom Dancer almost done. Deathcap almost done. Archangel's almost done. There's a power spike coming soon for these guys. The question is, by the time they get that power spike, how much magic is this going to be built up on Curse Academy? True. Do you see that Rux opted just to go Merc Tread straight into Hex Drinker? No Maw this time. Trinity Force is going to help him out. Oh, yeah. A little bit of extra HP. 300. Yeah. And then a little bit of magic resist for Pat. Right. He's really going. Count. There we he's go. He's going all MR here. There yeah. we go. He he, but he always buys the giant spell. It's interesting. He just kind of keeps it there because uh, think back to the beginning of season three. We made health the more efficient stat to buy. Basically, um, if you wanted just like a catch-all defensive stat, it was health. So he just has the giant spell just to be a durable dude. Um, actually, hmm. did you know about giant spell uh, with Rux um, with Aatrox specifically? So your abilities cost yes. percentage of your current health. Um, and your blood well is just a static number. So the more health you have, the more blood well your abilities give, meaning that your abilities give more attack speed with a giant's belt. Yeah, because it takes the HP yep. that you spent and puts it in there. Exactly. So it was actually a nice little soft synergy there that Rux has. 
Um, so when he blades, he'll get full. Yeah, he gets yeah. he gets more blood well than he would have without that item. Um, so cool stuff there. Just thought I'd share that with you guys. It's actually a fun one-off item for that champion. Half HP for Rux. He's gonna go with his team towards the Baron Pit. Curse Academy, well in control of this area. Pink wards in the Baron Pit, very important. They're gonna lose one on the road in though. They've got another one that's gonna watch Kez. And he sweeps it out with Bishu. Pink, pink ward, ward over the wall. wall. So they know that there was ward coverage. Both a pink and a green ward there. So they know they can't sneak in. It's a big minion wave down bottom that's gonna start pushing this turret for Cloud9 Tempest. Yep. Instead. Oh, they're gonna give him a dose of their own medicine. This is the bush that Cloud9 Tempest camped in last time. All right, Protect goes on to Kes. Oh. Garbu into the front. There's the jump in from Rux. Will they find much? A great shockwave onto three. K1 goes down. Can they find anything else for this fight? Nope, just the one for zero. And that was on, that was on Curse Academy side too. They yeah. lost a member. They that lost was a great K1. Engage. Glarp, Glebe ran into the brush expecting the engage and flashed out of it right yeah. away. He baited the engage right there. Exceptionally smart play by him. Mid lane turret goes down. Bot lane went down to the minions actually. And now Dragon as well getting picked up. Cloud9 Tempest just picked up three global objectives in the span of 20 seconds. And the only member to actually die on Chris Academy's side is Pat. So once again, he needs to start stepping it up. He, you know, We do expect supports to die mm -hmm. most of the time. But being the only person to die on your team and give up objectives off the back of it this late in the game is not good. But wow. Curse Academy, they're trying to get back into this by doing a sneaky Baron. Th they all went over the wall. That's so Mash. good. Yeah, Mash me, you know, whatever. That's fine. They had ward control the whole time, but they didn't lose it. C9 T capitalized by getting turrets and a dragon, mm -hmm. not by getting ward coverage over Baron. Great pickup by Curse Academy. Oh, they're going to go over the wall straight for Yazuki. And again, he doesn't know they're there. They have no way of knowing this. Cut off his route with slows. And he's going to kick it in the wall. Pops the uh, shield. Uh-uh, not going to matter. Almost greedy by Pat. That was actually close to him going down right there. He I like how he pulled off first. at first. Yeah. But uh, you saw Yeski save his spells, and that almost got a little bit too greedy. Kill picked up, though. Curse Academy wearing a bunch of Baron buffs. Really good turn back from them. So now uh, it's going to be, what, 38k to 45. So still holding on to a 7,000 gold lead. But now with Baron buff, the big lead to Curse Academy right now on the map. Yeah, seven turrets up. They have the middle inhibitor up again. So that's going to be the next place that Curse Academy pushes with probably a mixture of shoving a side minion wave mm -hmm. and then rotating to it after they get the inhib down. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Rux just push this bottom and then go ahead and have the four members remaining push the mid lane up until they're ready to get the inhib. So here we go. Mash me being given the farm. You're seeing actually, it's, it's actually very interesting, um, the way the farm is split up. So, of course, Duosec is not taxing his jungle very much. So, Rux, Duosec, and Mash all have pretty much equal minion kills. And actually equal, almost equal, kill participation. They're all kind of doing the same things for the team. Showing up equally to team fights as well as to their own lanes. Whereas for Cloud9 Tempest, you're seeing um, a very different setup there. Alltech's been kind of getting garbage lanes the whole time. He's only getting some cleanup farm. He's getting only 180 minions. Bishu's been just taxing the jungle the whole time. And Yazuki's been split pushing. So Altex actually going to take a lot longer to come online. He's only got two completed items to mash his three, which is actually really, at this point, not enough damage for Altex. Yeah, and also the fact that Magic Resist has been prioritized by Curse Academy over some type of attack speed slow or just HP and armor mm -hmm. in general means that the two members of Cloud9 Tempest that have high farm are going to be a little shut down. Exactly. I mean, you still can't... Aside from actually having a Banshee's Bell shut down a Shockwave, but uh, there's only one done so far here for Rux, but he's ready to take the front lines. Probably about 140 MR on him right here. Plenty happy to be that guy. The Trinity Force. It's coming up big for him again. It is. 4-0-1, man. He hasn't died with it yet. And we're going to look now for the mid lane. The inhibitor, of course, has respawned, but look how fast that oh. dies. Bishu has no armor. Just took a big chunk from Mash Me. Painful stuff. Aegis also done for Pat. I know we tend to see Randuin's rushed a lot by the junglers here, but he went Lizard Elder into a pretty early Aegis of the Legion. So extra 20 MR to his teammates there. Further shutting down Bishu and Yatsuki. This is looking very good. It's a lot on Altec's shoulders right now. Yeah, it really is. And last game he delivered, but now the rest of his team are a little heavier. Yeah, they are, unfortunately. Curse Academy prolonged the laning phase. They're up in kills, up in objectives, gold. 
and now they have the items to back up these team fights. And remember, this sort of early game happened last time. Curse Academy hitting a 5,000 or so gold lead by about this point, maybe a little bit earlier. Um, and Cloud9 Tempest found their way back in because Kez found Miracle engages with Pantheon. Time and again, found really, really good fights that his team could follow up on. The switch to Evelyn, and this was C9T who banned the Pantheon, yeah. lost that way into the game. Their only engages are the straightforward normal ones. And like, yeah, Eve can flank, but the Eve engage is nothing like a Panther engage. And they first picked their jungler, too. Yeah, they rushed that Evelyn. And now you're kind of wondering, is the Pantheon probably would have fit a little better into the late game. Yeah, engage. right, because you're going to first pick something. Who's going to engage? Now they're going to try to do a submarine type thing, throw the ball onto Kez, and have him walk straight into the team. But I don't think it's going to happen. I think all the engage is going to come yeah. on from Curse Academy's side. Yeah. And Cloud9 Tempest is going to have to back up and try to counter-engage, keep them at an arm's distance. But I don't know how possible that is. Well, the one thing that does go to C9T's favor is that uh, Curse Academy are mediocre at killing turrets. Sivir's the worst turret killer among AD carries, uh, I guess second to Urgot, um, because she's just so short-ranged. But Duosec on um, Ziggs is amazing at it. So they've got they've got some good graces and some bad spots here. Uh, we'll see if they can get the turret down, because Shockwave is so good at stopping these turret sieges. Like there that. it is. Going to be the jump in. Duosec low on health. Mash me in a bad spot as well. Rune Prison going to get him take down. Kill picked up by oh. Alpha, but the re-engage comes in for Rux, and they find the damage. Yazuki is going to go down one for one so far. What else will happen? Rux. Who's the passive minefield is down, flashed away from the hook that was going to land. Kez, one shot from dead, the one for one trade. CA backs up, goes back forward. They lost their turret pusher, so it's going to be on Duosec's shoulders here. He does have the wave clear, mm -hmm. but the damage is lacking. Remember, there's a giant B wave pushing down the mid lane as well, so they're trying to pressure. Bishu, if he gets his ball onto anybody and uses his dissonance, they would die. And Curse Academy realized that and back off. Yeah. They almost got to capitalize off the inhibitor that was dead, but not quite anything more. One for one trade, AD carry traded for the top lane of their Yansky 0 3 and 1. Here we so go, let's watch the fight again. Gonna see the shockwave as we're talking about it. Speak of the devil, boom, hits two, three actually in there, and they try to get in. And here comes the Mega Inferno Bomb in the lockup, up into the stuff, into the knockup from Rux, but it didn't knock anybody up. Mm -hmm. If it had landed and knocked them up, it would have been a much better trade there for Curse Academy in that yeah. fight. Rux could have actually waited the extra quarter second to walk a bit forward, but you also did see the Tibber's Inferno Bomb. Mm -hmm. CNNT still picked the one up anyway, but yeah, such good burst Ooh. damage available there. All tech, a little On bit the low. Hunt isn't available, but here comes Jumps Pat. Jumps the ward, Q's gonna land. Good damage, kick. No, uh, see, there's the Condemn. There's a Condemn that lets you kind of outplay that a little bit. Shockwave just got used, though. Oh my gosh, On Shock one person. Not ideal to jump forward. The land was gonna Ooh. get him safe, though. Ulti's getting traded around a little bit there. Everybody back to safe. Meanwhile, in Ruxland, he's go ahead and pushing the mid lane in, just causing some map pressure and trying to get himself bigger. Looks like he might be going for GA. Yeah. I think he'd go GA Randuins at this point. That's, that's, that's probably the ideal build for him at this point. Yeah. Go ahead and give himself more lives. Yeah, so I mean, Ma would aggressive. still be good for him. He'll eventually fi finish it. Yeah. I guess, I guess, yeah, that's kind of last item. I would definitely want a Randwins pretty soon, though. I'm actually surprised that he went for Chain Vest. I would actually prefer Randwins over GA, but, you know, Rux has his crazy builds and they work for him, so I can't, can't really complain. I'm just, I can all, yeah. all I can say is I'm surprised. Not that I'm, like, saying it's bad. That's true. That his crazy builds do tend to work for him. We saw Trinity Force on Renekton, mm -hmm. and he was just stomping with it, because every time he'd clear a minion wave out in the middle of a fight, it would give him the bonus movement speed. Just run at people. It was ridiculous. Baron's live once again. They're trying to get vision of this area and set up for another unfavorable situation for Cloud9 Tempest where they had to face check. And Curse Academy has good ward coverage for this. The Ziggs Bomb not going to... I think I'm surprised mm -hmm. by that because he could use it for the impending team fight for um, the actual Baron. But Curse Academy might just play the Siege game for a while and try to get mid inhibitor back down before they keep going. 5.8 thousand gold lead. Less than before. I mean, to be fair, this gold lead is actually shrinking right now. Yeah, that's Which true. Which you've got to be concerned about when you're Curse Academy. There is still a Rise and a Vein on the enemy team. Rise and the Vein haven't done much this game. Mm -hmm. But Glebe, Evan talked about him much. Again, his hooks and his more of his lanterns have actually been on point this game, getting people out. And now Cloud9 Tempest are actually in the driver's seat of this area. Now they're going to sweep away the pink wards, plural, in this area. Those are both really good pink ward spots. I actually much prefer pink wards in the Baron Pit to using the Sweeper because you can continually keep killing the wards as they keep coming down. Uh, but the inside tracker for Curse Academy, they're going down the mid lane, forcing the recalls from C9T. C9T got some ward coverage down, 
over the Baron Pit, but this could be a very, very fast and hit kill. No home guards on nope. any of the members. Got to watch out for the hook. Oh, one, one more hit. Rux gets it. 5-0-1 on him. Honestly, big score line. This is good. Okay, so Inhib goes back down. It's going to continue to create pressure here. Curse Academy, if they have enough Sight Stone charges, can get control back over the Baron Pit. But they're out of pink wards. It's true. So they can't deny the vision. They're going to have to wait for the sweepers. They have two up. Had to hit him in the right spots. One! Ooh, barely caught that one, too. K1 barely got rid of that ward. Oh, is he actually going to... He's a little delayed to get back to his team. Nobody's going to take advantage of that. That's good for him. Got to make sure. You just got to sweep and make sure that there's nothing there. I mean, it's four sweepers versus three. So, They've got a lot of ward sweeping available. K1's been missing his tibbers. And I was going to say earlier that the best flash tibbers are the ones that people don't expect. Yeah. So if you see an Annie who's playing like K1 is right now, you're like, oh, he wants to flash tibbers us. Mm -hmm. So you have to come from blind spots. You have to sweep out an area. And basically play it like a Fiddlesticks ultimate. Yeah. Just get in there and make sure that they don't have any time to react. And if they do, it's tiny, tiny window. Or or you kind of wait around and, and you kind of wait for the fight to actually start. Let Ziggs poke. Let Sivir throw out her boomerangs and whatnot, mm -hmm. right? And then make your opponents realize, okay, we have to dodge other skill shots, get their mind off it, and just ult in the middle of the team fight. Yeah. And Cloud9 Tempest, they are up one in this series. And Curse Academy, they're trying to even it up, and they're in a good position. Great Ooh. Ziggs ult, though. Cleared the wave. Save the turret. Save the turret. Do some damage to Cloud9 Tempest. And now that bottom minion wave is actually pushing in favor of Curse Academy. Mm -hmm. And they might have to answer that soon for Cloud9 Tempest. Yeah. Super minions in the mid lane. Regular minions in the bottom lane. And the Curse Academy on Baron. This is where Cloud9 Tempest has to make a good decision. And a new pink ward for K1. You can get that into the Baron pit. And I'm also surprised, actually, the lack of Aegis for Cloud9 Tempest because Ziggs is such a factor here. Locket would be pretty big Ooh. for these guys. Glarp, wow, he flashed early. He was afraid of that one. Got himself the heck out of there. Baron taking damage. It's going to be the trade, though. Cloud9 Tempest is going to go for the inhibitor as a trade for Baron. But no, they can't even get that far. They back off after turret number two. Wow, so they traded turret for the Baron. And now down bottom, that turret's taking some damage. Well, look at this. Curse, Curse Academy, Academy straight for it. They think they can backdoor the, I think it's the inhibitor respawn, actually. I'm trying to think of the timer on it, but they're just like running down to the jungle looking to catch something. Might be Kez on the on the backside. This is this is secret agent stuff. I mean, this this must have been Pat's call. 007. Ooh. They're not finding anyone. This is uh. Okay, oh, they're they're gonna they're, find oh no, they're finding Altec. Altec's got nowhere to go. This is going to be risky. Pop shield. He has stealth. Mash me. Spell shields the condemn. Kill comes in a duo sec. They've got a mini wave to push. Five v four with the Baron buff. They're going to take this turret unless there's a perfect counter engage here from Bishu. Chances of that are very, very low. He's trying to get the Banshee's Veil off. Can he set up the correct engage for his team? Uh, Mashby predicted the Flasher in prison. Didn't find it, though. Put the Spell Shield on. Half HP turret right now. See if they can keep going. 35 seconds until Altec comes back up. Duosex still trying to spam. Lands a bomb on a Bishu. Blue Elixir ticking on that guy. Baron buff helping. And push forward again. Turret's about three seconds from dead. And down it goes onto the inhibitor. 20 seconds still until Altec comes up. And a gigantic double spawned minion wave is coming down the mid lane right now. Mid inhibitor about to be respawning soon, I believe. And Curse Academy about to wait for super duper minions in the mid lane. They might back to our top on the way. We'll see. Rux is actually over the wall. They find the engage and Bishu Ooh. goes down. The Tibbers finally lands. The flash Tibbers for K1. It's going to be a five versus four with Baron buff again and super minions. Can they make this happen to close the game out? It's got the stun. We're going to get stunned to Kes. Not going to do too much from that. Minefield down as well. Health bar still getting lower. The engage comes in. Both turrets are dead. Can they close out the Nexus now? Still 40 seconds of 5v4. Hitting down on the Nexus. Cat running Ooh. around. Picks up the kill. Nexus is going to be falling down. Kes taking pain as well. It's sure to be the game. And Curse Academy ties it up one to one. And Curse Academy, they pull it out there. They played the composition correctly this time, mm -hmm. where they got the early game lead and they kept it and they had objective control from the start. And I love Duosec on the Ziggs. LeBlanc yeah. is his most played in solo queue, but his performance on that was not team-oriented. Yeah. This time, the Ziggs, the wave clear, the Mega Inferno Bomb to keep Cloud9 Tempest off of objectives was crucial. It was a wave clear that they were lacking in Game 1. Yeah, and it just worked so well. I like Curse Academy shot calling. It's interesting, I've been watching this a little bit um, during their games, and 
after I after I railed on Rux for saying, oh, you, you took a menu wave and it gave away Dragon, I started watching that more closely. They were giving away menu waves on turrets. They even lost yeah. actual turrets to menu waves in order to position better for objectives. And they started getting a lot more focus on what's important right now and making sure they controlled those. Curse Academy, I think, grew a little bit in that game. Yeah, and I really, really liked the fact that he won with Trinity Force again. I'm going to say I really like it, but I don't. You really like it. I really like it. Because it's 100% win rate for you don't, him. Connected don't... Aatrox, champions that don't even use like a third of the stats on it. It's like, ma mana, we don't need that. AP, eh. D technically helps. It technically helps very minusculely. Yeah. I mean, it's there for the burst. It's there to convert an early mid-game lead into removing a target. Right? <laughs> don't make an argument for this. Don't, I mean, don't, it, don't make an argument. But it's what they're trying to do. <laughs> I'm not saying it's necessarily the most efficient, but it is the best choice for that role of the champion. If you're like, look, we got to kill Altec, it's the best choice for that. Yeah, and they did do that. Yes, Altec ended the game 2, 3, and 0. It's completely different than his 7, 0, and 14. Yeah, 13, 14, game. 17, like a high yeah. number regardless. A lot of assists on, on him. And now he's actually had three deaths. So his KDA. Yeah. So if nothing else was accomplished now mm -hmm. from Curse Academy and they don't, lo they don't win the third game, they still got rid of his KDA. They cut it by a third. So... Did a good job there. And also to point out is um, 3-0-7 for the mid lane Ziggs, 3-1-6 for the AD carry Sivir right there for Curse Academy. Um, Mashmi still had a very good game, right? First game didn't die, lost, died, and won. Yep. So um, deaths have a 1-1 correlation with winning games so far for Curse Academy um, on Mashmi. But also just kind of to point out that, I know you talked about it when the game ended, but the Ziggs pickup worked so much better for Duosec. I tend to agree. I'm thinking of other champions that fill a Ziggs-type role and can play long-range wave clears. Gragas. Yeah, Grag is in there. Um, Lulu's there. Even Orianna, if he can play it, like will be one of those safe. I will lane. I'll put down AOE and participate in fights. I want to see that continue for him um, because that's the role that is working for these guys. Yeah. Other adaptations I see the Sivir ban. I think is going to come through or get it contested. I think Mashmi is starting to put a little bit too much pressure there. What do you give up for that though? Do you not? Oh, well, I guess they could stop banning the Pantheon. Yeah. And pick it up for themselves? Well, it, that was really strange. It, it is weird, but also remember that side switches as well. Last yeah. time around, both Lulu and Cassidy were banned away by Cloud9 Tempest when they were on red. They actually kept the Cassidy ban on blue side as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but the Lulu ban switched sides. So like, there's, there's sometimes less available because they've got to worry about Lulu, maybe worry about Elise and things like that. But I think Sivir is a very real thing to be afraid of. And honestly, to be completely fair, Pat, he won the jungle matchup, Lee Sin versus Evelyn. Yeah. He out jungled heavily, great counter jungling. But like at that point it's like, do you really need to ban Elise? Do you need really need to ban Pantheon? All these things, like he's gonna have X impact kind of regardless, no matter how deep you cut his champion pool. Yeah, and the fact that Cloud9, that Cloud9 Tempest, they're playing for the late game with this composition with Rise, Oriana, and Vayne, that they've run both games. Yeah. And they don't have a lot of bans to spare when they are on red side. Mm -hmm. Like you said, Lulu Cassidy. Yeah. That's what they gotta get rid of. That third band, they want to use it on a jungler because junglers have the highest early game presence. Yeah. So they want to take something off like Pantheon or Kha'Zix sure. or Elise, which is the highest one right now. Mm -hmm. And Dexter was talking about it on the desk earlier yeah. today about how ferocious Elise is in the early game. So yeah. get that factor out of there. Then you can have your early game flourish and possibly come out with the W, but they didn't in this game. Because yeah. the Evelyn, in my opinion, they didn't have enough early game presence versus somebody like Lee Sin. Yeah. So let's stretch it around a little bit. Yeah. So we can talk about individual champions, individual plays. We can talk about Risers, Aatrox, all that. What do we think about Cloud9 Tempest changing their game plan? So both games, right? Late game Rise, late game Vayne, Organa Protects, Junglers, whatever the heck you can get. And it says, let's play a longer game. Curse Academy are not letting them do that. CA playing a great early mid game. Both times they've proved it. 2v1 lanes, 1v1 lanes, doesn't matter. They're making better rotations, finding better counter ganks. The first 20 minutes have been theirs both times. Yeah. To me, C9T, rethink your lineup. Play Caitlyn into Sivir instead of Vayne into Sivir. Both are great matchups, but for different reasons. Go get your early game leads, right? Use the fact that Bichu's winning the mid lane, and do things with that. Don't allow yourself to get the Rise vs. Aatrox counter pick again. Yeah. Get better lanes, play from there. Yeah, and Curse Academy, like you said, they're adjusting their strategy as it goes on. Mm -hmm. They said, we didn't have enough wave clear, let's make a little tweak. And boom, pulled it out for them. Now they're going to game three here. And this is the crucial game three. Whoever wins this goes up against LMQ mm -hmm. and gets a bye. Gets a first round bye in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Which means, 